All right, welcome everyone. It is noon and we want to get started. I am Spalding Hurst. I'm the director of the Office of Mission Advancement at Nazareth with the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. And we are very excited to have you with us today. It is now time to begin our program and we invite you all now to join the journey. Welcome everyone. I'm Sister Rita Davis. I entered when I was 21. <laughs> In the year 1812, three young women answered the call of Bishop Jean-Baptiste Marie David to gather as a young community to provide education for the growing Catholic population in the Bardstown area. Three women did respond with Catherine Spalding as their chosen leader. Rapidly, three more young women came and they became the beginnings of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. From this time into the present, the Sisters' ministry evolved to include not only education, but also health care, social work, parish ministry, and now includes working for justice issues and care of the earth, always attempting to respond to the needs of the times. In 1947, at the request of Bishop, Pat, uh, Bishop in Patna, six sisters volunteered to go to India, providing nursing care for a leper clinic. Eventually, Women from India joined the sisters, expanding the ministries to include education, health care, and social work in both cities, towns, and villages. The call to the Caribbean came when sisters traveled to Belize in 1975. Working with the Jesuits there, they developed formation programs for lay church leaders. Here too, women from Belize joined the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, whose ministries included education and health care, and continued to broaden both in Belize City and in the Toledo District. In 1979, found the sisters once again expanding their ministries into Nepal, where they today work among the villages, attending to social needs and care for children throughout the country. The year 2000 marked the beginning of the new millennium, and the sisters heard the call of the people of Botswana to develop a presence in the country to provide child care, hospice services, and parish ministries, which are still active today. The most recent of the SCN call to ministry in a new country came in 2021, when four sisters brought the SCN charism, again meeting the needs of the time, to Kenya, working in villages large and small, providing parish ministries and educational support. Three young women in 1812 in rural Kentucky, trusting in God's providence, began a journey of courage and service among the most vulnerable, which today spans across the earth. From the sacred land of Nazareth to the sacred lands in, Bel in India, Belize, Nepal, Botswana, and Kenya, the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth 
respond to the needs of the time because the love of God calls us. What an inspirational way to begin our program. Thank you, sisters. I have the honor today of introducing our MC for the event, for this gathering. Shane Fitzgerald is the Chief Operating Officer of UofL Health and a great friend to the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. Shane has been an instrumental part of Join the Journey for many years, and we are so thankful that he is with us today. Will you please join me in welcoming Shane Fitzgerald. Thank you, Spalding. Good afternoon, everyone. The sisters have made a difference in the lives of so many people in Louisville and throughout our world. Today, you will be inspired by the stories you hear and how the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth have touched so many lives and continue to do so. That is why when I was asked if I would serve as MC for this event, I gladly accepted the honor. Welcome to Join the Journey. Thank you for your presence with us today. I want to introduce you to the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth who are with us today. Let me ask all the sisters to stand so that you can connect with them when you have a moment. Sisters, please stand. would like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank the sponsors of today's event. Because of their generosity, we can say that every penny raised here today goes directly to support the ministries of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. What a gift. We thank you. Our premier sponsor, Ware Constructors, Inc. Allspring Global Investments, CHI St. Joseph Health, WCM Investment Management, Byerly Ford Nissan, Christian Brothers Investment Services, Inc., Schmidt Associates, KPFF Consulting Engineers, Clearbridge Investments, Randy and Christy Coe, Jones Nail and Mattingly, Knights Mechanical, Saracen Asset Management, Siemens, U.S. Bank, Westfield Capital Management, Ascension Investment Management, D.C. Elevator, Derby City Letho, Gordon Food Service, Lincoln National Bank, Ratterman and Sons Funeral Home, St. Margaret Mary Church, and Wellington Management Company. Let's give them a round of applause. And now let us take a moment to pause and ask God's blessing on our meal and on our time together. At this time, I invite Sister Barbara Flores, Western Province Provincial, to lead us in our blessing.
And so as we gather here as partners in ministry, let us pray. Loving God, as we gather once again in Louisville, we come before you with grateful hearts to thank you for the food before us, for delightful companions, good conversation, and inspiring stories of people making the world a better place. May this meal sustain our bodies and remind us of the many blessings of our lives. We are thankful for the love of family and friends who surround us and for the abundance we enjoy. May we always be mindful of our sisters and brothers who may only know hunger, fear, and loneliness, and thirst for a better world. May we be blessed by you, God, as we share this food and work together for justice, for the good of all, for the good of creation. May the spirit of Mother Catherine, Mother Catherine Spaulding, permeate this gathering. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and together say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Barbara. And now, please enjoy your meal. We will resume in a few minutes. Continue to enjoy your meal, but at this time, I would invite Sister Jacqueline Jesu. She is the president of the Congregation of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth to share a few words with us. Continue to eat as we hear from Sister Jackie. Let me begin by offering a heartfelt thank you for your presence here and for the many ways that you support the mission of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth through your prayers, volunteer efforts, as colleagues and advisors, and through your financial support. We are grateful. As Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, our mission statement calls us to care for all creation and to work for peace and justice in solidarity with oppressed and marginalized peoples through our ministries in India, Nepal, Belize, Botswana, Kenya, and the United States. Founded in Nelson County in 1812, our mother house remains at Nazareth, right here in Kentucky. One of the many ways the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth's mission flourishes is by our many dedicated supporters, some of whom are members of the Pelican Society. In Catholicism, the pelican is a symbol, symbol of sacrifice and selflessness. This group of supporters commits to monthly donations, providing a steady and reliable funding, funding source for our critical causes. From education in the United States to healthcare in Belize, and vocational training in India, 
Through their contributions, members of the Pelican Society ensure the long-term sustainability and global impact in our mission. Remarkably, every dollar raised goes directly to the support of our ministries. 100% of the money, 100% of the time. This is an incredible gift, and we are deeply grateful to each one of you. It is my honor to serve in leadership for the congregation, along with Sister Amrita Manjali. One of the privileges and joys of serving in leadership is that I get to travel around the community, visiting sisters, associates, collaborators, in various parts of the world. Each day, I am inspired when I hear from our sisters about the work they are doing. When I witness our sisters' commitment to stand up for justice in our world, to do what is right, even when it takes every ounce of courage they have. Today, you will hear how God works with us and through us. By supporting us, you become part of our mission. Our sisters and colleagues are dedicated to the gospel of Jesus, living our motto, the love of Christ impels us. As we strive to relieve suffering and work to change unjust systems around the world, in India, Nazareth Hospital in Mukama has become a center of healing under the leadership of the sisters since 1947. Among the countless stories of transformation, one, of that, one that shines brightly is that of Suman Kumari, an 18-year-old from a remote village in Bihar. Abandoned to fate due to superstitious beliefs, Suman battled a severe bacterial infection in her brain and spinal cord. Thanks to swift intervention and compassionate care, she recovered from life-threatening tuberculosis meningitis, embodying a testament of resilience and hope. This is the change the sisters strive to bring about every day across India. In Nepal, our sisters extend their reach out to remote western area of Surkhet. Recently, they provided educational materials to students living far from the city center. In Nepal, it is customary for all students to wear uniforms to schools. When Yamuna, a 10th grade student, received her uniform, she began to cry. Throughout her 10 years of schooling, she had never owned an uniform or a school bag. This gesture from the sisters was a first for their village and it deeply touched Yamuna. Sister Rosita shared this heartwarming story with us, describing how the entire staff cried with Yamuna. In Belize, life, the living independently in full existence ministry, led by Sister Carlet Gentle, is dedicated to improving the quality of life for seniors. By offering vital services and fostering independence, the ministry breathes new life into the elderly, ensuring they receive the dignity they deserve. Iris, a senior living in Belly City's south side, struggled with so social isolation until Sister Carlet's intervention. 
with access to medical assistance, food and essential resources. Iris and others like her are now thriving thanks to the transformative impact of life ministry. This ministry stands as a testament to the power of compassion and community. Sisters at Pabalong Hospice in Botswana run a compassionate program for those too ill to travel for care. They offer home visits, medical supplies, and transportation to medical appointments. Mr. O, paralyzed after a spinal injury, found hope here. The hospice care established him, enabled him to transition from a wheelchair to walking with crutches, allowing him to return to one of his favorite activities, gardening. Through their holistic approach, the sisters at Bab Babylon Hospice are not just healing bodies, but also nurturing spirits and restoring lives with kindness and skill. St. Francis of Assisi Academy in Kenya provides quality education and gospel values to a community facing immense challenges. Carolyn's story is a testament to the transformative power of education. She was initially denied admission to the local government school. Despite financial hardship, her father brought her a uniform for St. Francis, hoping she could attend. The sisters helped to get her admitted and covered her fees. Inspired by her mentor, Sister Helen, Carolyn now dreams of becoming a teacher, embodying the spirit of perseverance fostered in this nurturing environment. The sisters are exp now expanding the school to grade six to allow students like Carolyn to complete their primary education. On one of the hottest days of this summer, I was joined by sisters, associates, and employees at Nazareth to help residents find relief from the heat wave. Acknowledging the harsh realities of our climate crisis and escalating temperatures, the sisters organized a giveaway of 500, fox, 500 box fans to the local community. Many recipients lacked air conditioning, both at home and in their cars, some with the small children. This act of kindness was a tangible demonstration of compassion in motion and the spirit of care and solidarity ingrained within the Nazareth community. These efforts are only the beginning to show the good that is happening across the congregation. We, the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, could not achieve this without your partnership. On behalf of the congregation, I thank you, each one of you, for your commitment in our efforts to inspire those around us through our actions and dedication to God. As we care for our earth, support the disadvantaged, and speak for the voiceless, you join the journey. Together, we work for a better world, and we are forever grateful. Thank you.
1812 at St. Thomas, Kentucky, 19-year-old Catherine Spaulding embarked on a mission that would leave a lasting legacy. Guided by a profound spiritual calling, she and her companions established their foundation at the sacred grounds of Nazareth, marking the beginning of a journey that has now spanned for over 200 years. This sacred ground with its rolling landscape continues to be a place of spirituality and devotion. Nestled amidst the beautiful forested hills of Kentucky, the Mother House stands as a monument to their faith and community. With a life centered on prayer, a focus on living in community and embracing the interconnectedness of all creation. The Sisters of Charity of Nazareth's spirituality reflects a divine gift for serving others with humility, simplicity, and charity. Through changing times, evolving needs, and shifting boundaries, the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth's pioneering spirit has persevered. At bedsides, boardrooms, classrooms, or hospitals, sisters have dedicated themselves to healing, advocating for justice, mentoring leaders, and providing comfort with unwavering compassion. Today, sisters continue to respond to the urgent needs of our time, honoring their rich history. They are embarking on a journey of charity in six countries to address the pressing needs of today. In Nepal, they are leading social change, spearheading initiatives that uplift. Once uh, she took all different trainings, awareness training, and uh, leadership training in Navajoti, she, she was inspired and motivated to start something for the women. In Botswana, providing hospice care, they offer compassion and support to the sick. I wouldn't know where I was because that is where my life was, where my mother's life was. She died a dignified death because of you know, the support here. In Kenya, supporting community efforts, their work is pivotal to local prosperity. They promote water harvesting, securing this precious resource for residents. They work to provide education for children, laying the foundation for a bright future. In Belize, sisters guide spiritual growth, shaping futures with integrity. When I contact them, sisters, they give me some big help. I have a happy life with my children. Even though I can't afford them so much, but with what I'm seeing now, it's a big help for me. In India, sisters operate schools with a focus on ethical, intellectual, and physical growth for bright futures. I see uh, some smile in their face, so that helped me also feel good. These children, they don't uh, go to the schools, we'll educate them, and when they are ready, we'll uh, enroll them in the government school. In the U.S., Sisters repair homes in times of disaster and address food scarcity and basic necessities for living. So how, how long did you live in a car? Wasn't that kind of hard? Five years and six months, exactly. In a car? In a car. Well, I got so used to it, I'm like, okay, you know, I would love to have running water and lights so I didn't have to run and pack my water or, you know, turn my headlights on every now and then so I want to see what's going on out here. I mean, outside of that, I got used to it. God has done a lot of wonderful things for me. A lot of It's nice to rest your body in a, in a place that's bigger than a car. Yes.
All that the sisters are flows from a deep sense of spirituality. Impelled by the love of Christ is at the heart of all that the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth do as they strive to deepen their understanding of the mysteries of the universe. In their daily lives, they are living the gospel, creating hope and empowering others. This spirituality shines through as they work to transform our world. The pioneer spirit of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth began in a log house in Kentucky. That spirit continues today in the United States, among the forests and blue grass of Kentucky, across the Caribbean Sea, over the Indian Ocean, to the Himalayan mountains, past the Great Rift Valley, and to the Kalahari Desert, where you will find the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth as they continue to follow the vision of their foundress with creativity and perseverance, inspiring those around them through their actions and their profound dedication to God. Be a part of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. Join the sisters in prayer. Support the mission. Working together for a better world. Good afternoon. I am Sister Lisa Palega, a Sister of Charity of Nazareth. I have, most re I have most recently been dedicated to the work of CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocates for the Children in the Louisville area. This ministry, working with neglected and abused children in Jefferson County, touches directly into the work of countless generations of SCNs, including our foundress, Mother Catherine Spalding. I want to share with you a short reflection of my journey, a journey that demonstrates the power of service and the essence of being a sister of charity in our contemporary world. Imagine a world where your deepest beliefs about life are challenged not only by conflict, but by kindness, humor, and openness so profound it beckons you toward a path you never thought you'd walk. My story comes from a fabric of diverse experiences, from my childhood in my family's pizza restaurant in suburban Chicago, to the challenges and revelations encountered through my career and personal journey toward embracing God's call. I start with where I grew up, my family's pizzeria. It seemed my brother, cousins, and I spent countless hours playing in and around the restaurant while our parents made pizzas and ran a business. My first childhood job, a ministry of sorts, was to grind the mozzarella cheese used to make the pizzas. <laughs> Along with my closest playmates, including my brother and cousins, I learned to love sports and the outdoors. I loved to go to Wrigley Field with my father to watch the Chicago Cubs play. I learned many lessons at home, at the restaurant, from my family, and in school. I was given a good Catholic education. I was very fortunate. Attending St. Simeon grade school and Immaculate Conception High School in the Chicagoland area. I struggled during my teen years as my parents divorced, but I learned forgiveness from my mother. If she was able to forgive, then so was I. I very much appreciate the sacrifices my mother made for me. After graduating college, I knew there were so many life choices before me, and I was not ready to make a life commitment. 
I spent eight years pursuing a career as an environmental consultant. I thought I had arrived. However, many, cha many changes were on the horizon. While pursuing my career, I found myself quick quickly tested when my mother passed away when I was only in my mid-20s. I struggled with her death. I struggled with the existence of God and re-imaging God. I felt I was in a dark night of the soul. It was during this time that I began to experience the connectedness between physical exertion, such as bicycling and hiking, and the spiritual. For me, physical exercise is a form of prayer. It allows me the space and energy to come to a clarity of vision and see the balance between the physical and the spiritual. These life experiences filled with moments of joy, some hardships, and profound learning have shaped my understanding of service and advocacy. I was profoundly influenced by the sisters I met in my local parish, especially Sister Marie McKenna of the Sisters of the Living Word, who was the assistant pastor in our parish. She had a distinctive approach. This sister was so different from some of the nuns I had known in grade and high school. No habit, a good sense of humor, and she had an openness to others I found intriguing and loving. It challenged my preconceptions of religious life. Through Sister Marie, I witnessed a different way of living, one that harmonized deep faith with approachable humanity. Invitations to join various events allowed me to see the sisters' life's, lives up close, a blend of joy, community, and dedication that was both pleasing and attractive to me. This encounter was not just an introduction. It was a call to a life I had not imagined was pro possible, prompting me to explore the, plat the path of becoming a sister myself. In 2002, I entered the religious community of the Sisters of the Living Word in Chicago. In 2011, I experienced the Essien spirit when I came to Nazareth for a retreat and learned to appreciate the person of Catherine Spaulding alive in her sisters. At a time when some religious communities are facing closure, I sense that the SCN mission and vision are very much alive and have a strong future. The invitation to religious life and ministry continues to evolve and continues to call. Prayer, discernment, and some wise sisters such as Sharon Gray, Betty Blanford, Susan Gatz, led me to seek a transfer to the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. The SCNs have a storied history of dedication to the marginalized, the oppressed, and the vulnerable. As I continue to navigate my own path within community, I am constantly inspired by the legacy of our foundress and the living testament of these sisters. It is a legacy that challenges us to see the face of God in everyone we meet, to recognize the inherent dignity and worth of each person, and to act justly and lovingly in response. In my ministry with CASA, I was privileged to advocate for children and youth who have experienced abuse or neglect. This role was not just a job, it is a calling, a commitment to foster love, safety, and opportunity for all children. Like so many SENs through the decades and the centuries, my ministry was to answer the call to advocate for children and families so they are given the chance to thrive in a nurturing environment, free from fear and full of possibilities. In this pursuit, I know the importance of empathy and the power of community. 
The path has not always been straightforward or easy, yet, through each challenge, the constant support of my community and the guiding light of faith have provided strength and direction. I am filled with hope. Hope for the children served by CASA, hope for our world, and hope for the church. The Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, together with you, our partners and supporters, are committed to making a difference, one child, one family, in one community at a time. I invite each of you to reflect on how you might contribute to a world that is more just, compassionate, and loving. It does not require grand gestures. Often it is the small acts of kindness, understanding, and advocacy that make the most significant impact. Let us work together, inspired by the enduring spirit of service and charity, to create a brighter future. Thank you for allowing me to share a little about my journey and the mission that drives us forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Jackie. Thank you, Sister Lisa. The impact of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth is remarkable and worldwide. The SCN Lay Mission Volunteer Program is dedicated to serving the poor and marginalized. Now, Sister Luke Boyarski, Director of the Lay Mission Volunteer Program, will share more about this important work. We welcome Sister Luke to the podium. We won't tell anybody, but he's my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here once again at Join the Journey, where you get a glimpse of our volunteer efforts in Kentucky and across the globe. By working hand in hand with these communities, the partnership aims to address and alleviate the challenges faced by those in difficult circumstances. This ministry is not just about providing aid, but fostering mutual understanding and respect across all cultures. The goal is to create a positive impact in the lives of those who are often overlooked, ensuring that their needs are met and their voices heard in the spirit of solidarity and shared commitment to social justice. Our ministry would not be possible without our volunteers. If you have ever participated in any volunteer effort, will you please stand, whether here in the United States or beyond, please stand. Thank you, thank you so much for your support and dedication to our Lay Mission Volunteer Program. We greatly value our volunteers and cannot do this without you. You, along with many others from all over the country, have joined us to assist hundreds of families. You have made significant differences in communities and the lives of many who are in so need of desperate assistance we have an individual here with us today who is originally from Belize, but lives in Willowsburg, Kentucky. She needed assistance to make her home safe and more accessible. She was in need of a deck on the back of her trailer since it was a very hilly piece of property 
and it was a safety issue. In addition to the deck, the volunteers undertook a multitude of projects, including assembling a tool shed, pouring gravel around the home to smooth the entryway, power washing the exterior, even plastering and painting interior walls. While there is still more work to be done, the recent repairs have greatly enhanced the usability of her space. At this time, I'd like to ask my friend, Shalbadine Flowers, to join me and share her story. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Hello, again, my name is Shelmadine Flowers, and I want to express my sincere appreciation for the support provided by the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. The volunteer work has significantly improved my living condition and brought much needed joy to my home. Before their assistance, I faced numerous challenges due to my limited mobility and uneven terrain surrounded my home. I felt alone upon the ridge where I live. But with the sisters, I have found a family and support, and I have never felt more supported. Thanks to the effort of Sister Luke and the dedicated team, I now have not just a safe and beautiful deck to enjoy the outdoors, but I also have a community that has been built around me. They did not just build things, they built connection and support that had transformed my life. The kindness and dedication of the volunteer have made my home comfortable and accessible. I'm extremely thankful to the team for their hard work and compassion the bound farm during the project have also enriched my life. I look forward to sharing Belizean meal with the local volunteer on my new deck. Thanks you to everyone who had made this possible and for the continued support from the Sisters of Charity of Nazarene. Sister Luke and Shalmadine take their seat. Aren't these some powerful stories that we've heard today? And this is just a small sample of the many lives that the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth have transformed. I admire their courage and commitment to serving those on the margins of society. The Sisters love without limits and give of themselves always. God has a plan and the sisters are a part of it. Now it is our chance to give of ourselves for this transformational cause. I am proud to stand here today on behalf of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth and ask you to join me in support of their outstanding work. Today, we are asking you to become a member of the Pelican Society, to do what Sister Jackie, Sister Lisa, 
and Sister Luke have demonstrated on behalf of all of the sisters to join in this journey and work together for a better world. And 100% of these donations, that's every penny, will go directly to these SCN ministries. And it's an investment that changes lives and helps to change our world. What you're inspired to give matters and helps the sisters meet the needs of those they serve. A gift of ongoing support will truly touch the hearts of those who rely on the sisters for help. So table hosts, if you would please distribute the donation cards that are in your packet. And those look like this. And as you can see on here, there's some suggested uh, giving levels to join the Pelican Society. The mission of the sisters is sustained by many dedicated supporters. And the Pelican Society members commit monthly donations to provide a steady source of funding for the sisters' missions. And everything you would need to become a part of that Pelican Society is right here on this card. A gift at one of these levels makes a tangible impact on the lives of those in need by providing education in remote villages, providing fundamental human rights, access to clean water, quality health care in places where there's no other option, skills training and empowerment programs for women, and something we can all use, spiritual guidance. And I think we've seen a lot of that today. And we also know and respect that we all have different financial means, so we truly appreciate whatever level of support that you can provide. But thanks to our sponsors, every single dollar you give goes directly to the SCN missions, 100%. If you would like to become a monthly supporter and a member of the Pelican Society, you can scan the QR code that's on this card or the QR code on the screen. That will take you to a secure web page at Nazareth.org, or you can write your details on the card provided, and also you can come to our registration table out in the hallway. So after you choose a level of support, complete the card, and then enclose it back into the envelope and give it to your table host. And then table host, please collect all of these cards and bring the large envelope to the registration table. Whatever gift you have chosen to make, we sincerely thank each of you. Thank you, Spaulding. It is wonderful to hear how supporting the sisters through the Pelican Society is made easy and accessible for anyone. And for your generosity, we extend our sincere thanks with some special gifts. You may notice at your place setting, there is a comfort cross. The comfort crosses have been blessed at Nazareth. When you hold this in your hand, may it be a reminder of all the blessings and gifts we each have. We also have a sweet gift for you. Also at your place setting, some of the finest honey harvested at Nazareth. And please take and enjoy. Thank you again to each of you for joining us today. Your presence is a great encouragement, and you have helped make this Join the Journey Luncheon a success by your presence. Now, for a very special final blessing from the sisters, could I ask that all sisters here today please stand? And I would also ask that Sister Tanya Severin to please come forward.
Sisters, please extend your hand in blessing and we will sing our blessing song. May all that you will do be for the healing of the whole. May all that you will do mend our broken world. May all that you will do bring blessings on the earth. May all that you will do be for the good of all. All that you will do. Christ light shine in you. May the Christ light shine in me. And you let us.